I found a really interesting data set by the NOAA National Hurricane Center, so I thought I'd make a quick video to, to show it and do a quick analysis using it. So it's historical hurricane tracks from 1842 to 2021. I'll start drawing it because it can take a, a minute to fully draw. It's just an amazing data set. Clearly there's going to be a difference in quality over time with more recent tracks being more accurately um, captured than older ones uh, with satellite technology and radar and things like that. We have much better data in the more recent period, but uh, it's quite an impressive reanalysis of old meteorological data and a lot of other data sources as well, like uh, ship logs and things like that to try to get these older tracks as well. And so it's uh, hurricanes as well as tropical storms, tropical depressions. So, and you can see the, the typical pattern. They, they often start tracking eastward or they form in the um, southern warm oceans in the Gulf of Mexico, track eastward and then hook up and get into the westerly circulation. Uh, Most of the action is in the South Atlantic Gulf of Mexico, but you also have these kinds of storms forming in the eastern Pacific as well. And a few of those have made, um, made it up into uh, California and one into Nevada, a few into Arizona and New Mexico. But, not nearly as much action and not as severe as storms as we have in the Gulf of Mexico and South Atlantic. So I did a little analysis to see what counties of the U.S. are most often hit by these things. And so here's all the tracks again just shown as a single symbol. There was one processing step I had to do before doing the um, looking at the intersection between tracks and the counties. And so this is the layer I used for doing that. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is this is a pretty rudimentary analysis where the hurricanes are quite large systems and so they're not only impacting the, the counties that the track crosses over, they would be affecting adjacent counties and sometimes adjacent counties maybe even more severely hit. But there's enough of these features to do this kind of analysis just to see you know, spatially where uh, these things are impacting um, the counties the most. So here's the intersection counts for all of these systems, so hurricanes as well as the tropical depressions, tropical storms, and uh, clearly you can see that the pattern of the coastal you know, Gulf and uh, Atlantic coast being impacted the most. Here is the table sorted by counts descending, and so the number one county for being uh, hit by these tracks is Monroe County in Florida, so the southernmost part of Florida. Uh, the top five include another county in central Florida. Enough of these must be crossing over Florida to hit and happen to hit the central county the most. And as we expect, North Carolina, these outer uh, barrier coast areas, and, and Louisiana as well. So let's also look at bigger storms. So if I filter the tracks to just include the tropical storms and hurricanes, we still have a lot of features. Here is the map showing the track intersections over counties, uh, similar spatial pattern. If I look at the top counts, uh, this time it's Dare County, North Carolina is the number one for being hit by uh, tropical storms plus but well, it's only one more than Monroe County. Here's the top five. Oops. Top five again, and uh, yeah, so here we have Florida uh, getting up into Georgia a little bit, North Carolina again. And if we move on to actual hurricanes, so category one plus, here's the track, so not as many features and none uh, from the eastern Pacific are, are making it and made it up to the US. Let's see what the track intersection counts are like by county. Pull up that table as well. And here we go, Monroe County again, Florida being our winner, well not winner, the highest count, 24. Let's look at the top five and yeah, we're getting kind of the same, same spots. These outer barrier island areas of uh, North Carolina, Florida, in Central Florida and uh, Louisiana coast as well. So, like I said, very quick and dirty analysis. Uh, a more sophisticated analysis would, would try to incorporate the, the size of the storms as well to see how many areas are, are impacted. But yeah, I just thought that was a pretty amazing data set, so I thought I would share it with you. Thanks for watching.